Hello, everybody. Happy, happy Sunday. I hope everything is well. Hope all is well for everybody. Um, today, we're going to talk about when hope blossoms. Okay. Um, I want to welcome you to the faith series. Today, we are going to talk about what happens when hope blossoms in your life. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about something that I think is very important. We don't often think about. Many times we don't realize that hope can just inspire an avalanche of opportunities, an avalanche of beautiful things to come up in your life. And a lot of times we don't realize that until hope is less. Okay, so when you get to the point of hopelessness or when hope is less in your life, you start to notice like, man, I just feel like I can't mo get motivated. I can't get, um, I don't know, beyond motivated. Just I don't even have the energy anymore to get moving in my purpose. I can't get moving in my gifts. I can't get moving. And, um, and so I want to talk about something that is very, very important that I think we should focus on and definitely think about. Here's the thing. First, I want to talk about um, one of my coaching sessions I had this week that really inspired this video. Um, all the times when I have coaching or if you're a part of my Live with Carla Nicole group, you know I have a mentorship program. But anytime I get acquainted with with clients I often ask them okay what are you good at what do you what are you good at what, what's something that comes easy for you and the reason I ask this question a lot of times is to kind of take a peek in that vessel that person um, what are they really good at and a lot of times people really don't know sometimes what they're really really good at so it happened this week where i had a client she's really she really wasn't sure what she was good at at the time when i asked her and so um we had a conversation and i said you know what i said i will give her different ideas well are you good at doing hair are you good at doing makeup are you good at doing um this and that and she says no 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 and it was almost no to everything and i'm like really wait a minute, are you serious? You have absolutely nothing you're good at. She says, well, I am kind of funny. And I was like, you're funny? Hey, Kareem, I said, you're funny. I said, okay, well, that's a talent. That's a gift. Everybody on the planet is not funny, let me tell you. So that's a gift. That's something that you can sharpen and maybe even profit from. And then we talked some more and she started telling me that she loved children and, and it was other things that she was pulling that I don't even think she even realized at the time. And when we were talking, I thought, how many people on the planet have these gifts and they say it out of their mouth, but they downplay it like it doesn't have any real value or worth. And so um, I really wanted to talk about this because I think sometimes we really downplay something we are very talented at. And, you know, when we do that, we are sacrificing something that we can actually put into our life to where we can actually pour our life into a whole new dimension. We can get to the point where, like I told her, you can do so much with being funny. I mean, so many things, so many people are walking around here grim sad depressed i mean grief stricken there's so many people on the planet that are just seriously miserable and with you having a talent and a gift of making people laugh that in and of itself you can just make so much profit from not financially only you can even find your own inner joy your own inner peace by seeing someone else laugh you find yourself laughing and see I told her at the time of our session, I said, you know what? Let me tell you something. I said, I make it a point that every single day I belly laugh. What I mean by belly laugh is I laugh deeply and I laugh hysterically. 
Because to me, I feel like when we don't really take the time to truly find joy in laughter, we are spending a lot of time miserable. We're saddened. We're, we're, we're always uh, high strung or we're always trying to control something or we're always obligatory. We're always trying to make sure our kids are doing this and our family's doing that. But when you take the time to step away from all of that and just truly find a good laugh and truly laugh your ass off to the point where you're tearing up, you're crying, your mascara is all down your face, that, I'm telling you, is the true fountain of youth. I believe that and I'm telling you right now, when I laugh, I laugh with complete and total joy and it just makes me, I don't know, it makes me so full of, you know, extreme um, joy and peace. But a lot of times we don't find the time to laugh because we're so constantly think thinking about problems and bills and obligations, what time we got to get to work, what time we get off, what time this and that. And it just takes our peace right out of the door. And then we're like thinking to ourselves, man, is this all life is? No, it's not. <laughs> so one of the things that I learned about this session that I wanted to share with you guys on the live show was that this is powerful. Think about this. When we sit down and we start to really think about what it is we truly, really love to do, and we do it naturally, and it really is effortless, we start to learn that this is something I can do and maybe end up just really taking my time to actually advance into my purpose. I think we, um, we get to a point where we get so structured I think, you know, as children, you know, because my grandbaby is only a couple of a couple of months away from being a year a year old. I notice with his childlike ways, there are no limits. You know, as we get refined and become adults and we we think we know everything, we get so to the point where we get so confined and we start to define our life according to what everybody else is doing what everybody else is telling us we should be doing. And sometimes they don't even come out of their mouth and tell you, you should be doing this. You're just doing this because of what? Examples. You see on TV, people are going to work every day. You see friends going to work every day. You see family members going to work every day. You saw your parents going to work every day. And you begin to get this limited thinking that that's the only way to make money. That's the only way to make a, 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 a vital and vibrant life. And that's not true. So what I asked her, I said, well, since you're so good at being funny and uplifting, do you know how many people out here are miserable, sad? I mean, grief stricken or hell sick. There's a lot of people that are sick and they just, it, it's, it's, it takes every effort in their body to breathe. What about them? And so if we can give them a moment of joy, of happiness, of laughter, guess what that'll do for them? That will actually push them into a moment of joy. It'll push them into a moment of laughter, of happiness. And that's something that's irreplaceable. That's something that people need to do, I believe, every day. We need to be laughing every day. If we're not laughing every day, then we're really sacrificing a joyful moment we could be having with ourselves. I always try to make it a point to watch something funny. If even if it's something minor or if it's a, a comedy show or something, I make it a point. And I really advise you to prescribe that to you guys. As your coach, I definitely prescribe that you take a dose of comedy every day because it's essential and it's important. Hey, Ayana, it's important that we actually take the time to really allow ourselves to laugh and have and feel joy. Period. So back to what I was telling you about when hope blossoms. See, when hope blossoms, it opens up not only an opportunity to, for you to find joy and find your purpose and, and really sharpen your gifts, but it also gives you another other opportunities of finding different people that are in your same boat. It actually find you actually find people because you begin to have all you get begin to radiate this energy of positivity, of energetic poise. And what happens is other people become attracted to you. 
Now, I'm not saying love attractions, but those happen too. <laughs> but love attractions could even be best friend attractions. You can find yourself attracted to somebody like, I can't get enough of you. You are so powerful. You are so amazing. You are so energetic that it has me wanting to stick by you and spending time with you. Why? Because you are so full of energy and life and excitement. So hope does that really powerfully um, for many people. And I think when we start to sit back and pay attention, we start to see that, wow, when I do get hopeful, I do start to find myself advancing in not only my career, but I'm advancing in different type of networking and relationships and people. And why is that? Because we begin to, re we begin to revive inside our soul. Remember, I always tell you that you are a flame, right? And I say, when we're not really in our best version of ourself, we are still a flame, but our flame is just dim. So sometimes we need to ignite, reignite our flame. And we need to get the flame more blazing. And when we do that, it causes us to be more radiant. It causes people to become more attractive. So I wanted you to think about something. When I expressed to her her gifts, I said to her, although you are downplaying these gifts as though they're not real, or I shouldn't say that they're not real, but they're not valuable. That's what it is. That's the best word to call it. She just didn't see the true value of being funny, of being uplifting. And I told her, I said, just because this is not what you would call um, academically uh, something that people are going to say, I want to go to college to be a comedian. That's not how comedians get out here. That's not how comedians make it. Comedians don't make it based upon college degrees. There's no college degree to get to become a comedian. So I said, although you may think because that's not in the curriculum at the colleges that, that, that it really truly has no value, that's not true. That's not true. Just because you are a comedian or you are funny or you have an uplifting side to you that other people don't see, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have no value. Actually, baby girl, you got a lot of value because I'm going to tell you what, the need right now on the planet because of so many people being so miserable, so grief stricken, hey Satori, so grief stricken, so sad, so miserable. Because of that, someone being funny and bringing other people joy gives you what? It gives you an opportunity to do what? Many, many things that can help uplift people on the planet that we're not, that you're not even seeing or thinking about. And I think that when you're sitting back and you're really truly looking at the powerful things that we can offer when it comes time to looking back at, hold on a second, I think I can do this. And it has a value because a lot of times we don't, like I said, sometimes we have certain gifts that may not be in the college curriculum. You may not, you may not have that as an opportunity to go to college to get. That may not be on the curriculum. You may be damn good at, look, at doing plumbing. That is not in a college, in a college curriculum to get. So what do you have to do? Well, you got to go to a tech school or you got to do something like that to, or you're really good and powerful at IT. Well, sometimes that IT is good, but that's broad. Some people have to go to a tech school to get exactly into what they're good at and sharpen that skill. Again, hope like I said, when it blossoms in your life, recreates different opportunities. So when I told her that, I said, you know, I want you to just really sit on this and understand that your gift is just as powerful, if not more powerful than other people's gifts. I told her, I said, every day I have to laugh. If I don't laugh, it, you know, I have a drab day. And then I'm wondering to myself, well, why am I not feeling as light or not feeling as joyous? Or what is it about me today? I'm not, ah, uh, I didn't laugh today. I didn't get my good belly laugh today. And that definitely has an impact on me. And I'm telling her, I'm like, you know what? You being funny alone is very, very important for other people that are not feeling very, very much laughter, laughter. Not to mention, not only they're not feeling laughter, they may be feeling sick, saddened, depressed, and all kinds of other things. And we all know that there's many people out here just grief stricken and everything else. So bringing the liveliness, bringing the humor, bringing the funny from life 
and, and taking it and crafting it into a joke or crafting it into something that some a story or whatever that can cause somebody to truly feel a, a, a sense of joy and relief is priceless. I'm sorry, it's priceless. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is it's important that we don't get hung up on downplaying some of our gifts that we have that maybe we don't see as being valuable. We have to start thinking about certain gifts we have and say, hold on a minute. I'm going too far to assume that just because this is something that's not common, get what I said, not common, that there is no opportunity out here for me to do anything with it. That's not true. That's not true. Because so many people out here, think about the Rubik's Cube. Remember the Rubik's Cube? I'm, I'm showing my age a little bit, but the Rubik's Cube, remember that thing you spin around and you could never, damn it, you could never solve it. The thing was so hard to re resolve. I don't know. I never got even one. I, well, I got a couple sides right, but Rubik's Cubes. Can you imagine how much the Rubik's Cube crew, yeah. Rubik's Cube creator made off of making that damn cube. Everybody bought one. It was all popular. No, he didn't go to college to learn how to make a uh, Rubik's Cube per se. But that was something very crafty. People were just using it. Look at this. Matter of fact, we'll come to more current times. Look at the spinner. The spinner that the kids are playing with. Oh my God, that's really good for ADHD students. And it helps them with, with concentration and blah, 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 blah. Look at all of these things that have been created and the spinner, it just goes around and around and around. You're like, okay, <laughs> how is this so, so spectacular? But look at how trendy it just took off and had this big, huge trend and all schools started buying them and kids had them and McDonald's was giving them away. Think about that. And see, they just created it because they thought it was cool. It's a cool thing to do. But then they found out, well, this is good for concentration for children. Oh, okay. So listen, why I said that the spinner, I think, I don't even know if I'm calling it right. It, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's called the spinner. But anyway, the spinner, it's like a little spinner thing. It goes around and around. The spinner on its own was just a little cute little toy for kids to be occupied with. Parents didn't buy that for their concentration. Parents bought it because it looked cute. It was trendy. Kids wanted it. So it's like, okay, I'll go get it for you. And then come to find out, well, no, this is actually good for kids' concentration that are struggling with ADHD or attention deficit disorder or whatever. So what happened? The person that created the spinner, right? They created the spinner for kids to be entertained. But then, because there was already a hope invested, it blossomed fidget spinner. Thank you, Ayana. You are always my helper. So the fidget spinner opened up a new opportunity for what? Kids that were struggling with staying alert, staying on task. So they used the fidget spinner to help children with concentration. Again, this is an example. I'm not saying this is Bible because I'm just using it as an, as an example. So we're just saying, for example, it opened up another opportunity. This is what happens when you have hope in your life, see? When you have hope in your life and you're like, oh, you know what? I didn't know that I was good. We'll just say, for instance, I'm good at t-ball. Now, I wasn't good at t-ball, but we'll just say, for instance, I was, right? And then I start doing t-ball and then I go into softball, then I do well and go into the, you know, the majors. Oh, I'm sorry, the minors first and then the majors. And now I have a whole new opportunity. And now I'm on doing it and just enjoying something that I really, truly love to do. Again, that happens because of what? I took the hope. I, in, I invested in it. I then started to get good at it, right? And so in doing that, it helps me to get more opportunities to become blossoming into more opportunities i think we don't realize that our gifts can be the root cause for opportunities that are beyond our imagination you know so many things has happened in our in our it just in our nation not even including the world but in our nation so many little things has happened that you would never have expected to happen 
because they were so small or minute. They weren't great. They weren't huge. So when they first, matter of fact, the Cabbage Patch Kid. Remember the Cabbage Patch Kid? Remember when we were young and, oh, my God, people were trampling over people to get to those damn dolls. And, oh, I have to have one. And my parents was going to the store to get them. All of that fade and that drama and that trend was just crazy. Well, you got to think about it. That can happen in your life just by you making a decision to step back and say, what am I really good at? And don't be prejudiced on your gifts, see? That's what I had to show my client this actually this week. I had to say, hey, don't downplay that humor as that not being important. That's very important. That matter of fact, right now, because of so many people being so miserable and so sad and so... Oh my God, and I'm just miserable. There's so many people out here having that misery. Do you know what humor will do for these people? I said, not to mention elders, the forgotten. There's a lot of people forgotten in, on, on the planet. And we don't really understand that. There's a lot of people that have family members that are over here in hospice care. There's people that are in, in assisted living, elders that aren't getting any type of visitors coming in to see them. There's all kinds of people that are just absolutely miserable. Do you know what laughter does for people like that? And I really want people to stop downplaying your gifts. We all, every single one of you, all of you, Jordan, Satori, Asifa, Paul, Ayana, all of us have gifts. Every one of us. Now, we have to stop sitting on them as though, well, they they don't really matter. Well, that's not really important. Yeah, I draw a little, but that's nothing. Hold on. What do you mean you draw a little? Well, I mean, I do sketches and stuff, but it's nothing. Oh, no. I need you. And, and listen, my clients will tell you, one of which is Ayana. She will tell you, if you say something to me and I hear you say something like that, well, I draw a little. And I... I'm going to say, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. You're not going to be able to skip over that comment like that and not have me investigate what you mean. What do you mean you draw a little? Well, I mean, you know, I sketch a little something every now and then. Nothing big. Oh, no. I need you to. I will wait while you go and show me these sketches. I want to see what you got. It's because I had the same thing happen to me. You know what I'm saying? I had a gift of poetry. And I hid it for many years. I didn't let people know. I didn't let people know I knew how to write poetry. I hid behind, I hid it behind the bushel. I would write in private, not say nothing. Until when, you know, when my mom passed and then I wrote a poem about her and I sent it to my dad and he just ran with it. Like, what are you doing with that? Oh my God, this is a very phenomenal poem. You know, he went on and on. I'm like, well, it might be really good because you're emotionally attached to mom like I am. But I don't know about it being all that, you know. And then I had, you know, a friend tell me, hey, look, you need to you need to get out there and start showing your gift. And I'm like, ah, it's nothing. I mean, I write a little, but it's nothing. And I'm seeing all these poets, badass poets, man, they're going out here and memorizing their whole poem. And I'm like, I don't I don't do all that. I mean, I write, but that's just not me. Well, OK, that could be that could be the case. You may not be the memorable, the, the one that memorizes, but you're still a badass poet, though. And I was like, oh, you might be right. So I just started writing them and, and dropping them, and people will respond to them. And I still have my poetry. I still, you know, like I said, I still got my poetry. If you're interested, it's poetry by mystery. I still have my page up. Yes, I still do poetry every now and then. But at the end of the day, it was one of my gifts that I just didn't. I didn't want to bring out. I didn't want to talk about. It was just something I hid. So, like I said, my friends know and my clients know if I hear you say, oh, I'm good at such and such and such, I'm going to ask what it is. I'm going to say, well, wait a minute. What do you mean? I'm going to need for you to tell me what that means first. <laughs> so it's important that we don't downplay our value. We don't downplay our gifts and I'm talking about even the smallest of gifts even if we like to talk and some of us we could be chatty patties some of us can be um 
just really care we're very caring people there's some people that are very very caring and i think those big hearted people like that a lot of times are overly caring for so many people that they they lose their own peace so it's important that if you do have that caring side to you that you bring about it you bring a balance to it it's very important we have to have a balance to whatever we're doing so when you have a big huge caring heart you got to make sure that you are being mindful that okay my caring heart i have to be mindful that i'm i'm very selective and very choosy in particular as to who i share my caring space with because i can be exhausted if i care all the time and i take care of all these people and i'm not taking care of me so again we have to balance it out so again I really want you to remember, oh, Larry, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, see, I also was a black satin host, a radio show host. He's bringing up the old stuff. Yes, Larry remembers that. <laughs> and so, um, yes, yeah, so with that said, again, we have to remember there's a, there's a very big instrumental um, thing we need to make sure we're focusing on, which is what am I good at? And let's not downplay even the little things that we think don't matter. Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, I don't really want to talk about the fact that I have many, many, many different um, friends of different races. I I'm very diverse. Or I don't want to talk about the fact that I'm bilingual. I know two or three different languages or trilingual. I know different languages. Do you know how powerful you are if you have that gift? <laughs> If you know how to speak multiple languages, that comes in handy. Um, you know, well, I learned at a young age, you know, how to speak to the deaf. All of these things that we're not, that we're not being mindful of that is, is very um, valuable, that we don't see as valuable because we downplay it. Huh? It's nothing. It, oh, that's just something I, no, it is something. <laughs> and Ayana, like she said, well, I will tell you, no, we're not going to downplay what you're good at because what you're good at is something you can actually benefit from. Not only monetarily, but you can benefit from just, just by operating in that gift in your life. See, it's not always about the money, people. It's not always about the money. It's also about your peace here, your joy here. When you're working in your purpose, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you are truly st st taking each step towards something that you truly enjoy, guess what that does to you? That makes you not just want to roll out of bed in the morning. That makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning. That's the difference. We want to jump out of bed when we are enjoying our life. That means I'm, I'm so excited. Oh my God, I didn't know. I know how to do X, Y, and Z. So now that I know how to do X, Y, and Z, I know I got a purpose here. See, my dad always told me, we have a price to pay for being here on the planet. I'm going to let that simmer. We have to pay. Not talking about your mortgage, not talking about your rent. I'm talking about we have a price to pay. So when we were born and we came out of our mother's womb, we were already equipped, already equipped with gifts. If not more than one, we have multiple. So guess what? We have gifts that we now have to learn what and find what they are. So our, our whole life, we have, we, it's this big puzzle. It's a puzzle. So we have to learn to take the pieces of ourselves and start placing it inside the puzzle. What does this mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? And then as you place the pieces in your life and start to craft it around what it is you love to do, you start to sit back and say, ooh, I enjoy doing this. And so because I enjoy doing this, I'm going to continue to do this. And it's bringing me more than I could have ever imagined. I never knew I was going to have this much joy by doing this X, Y, and Z. So again, you start to learn, oh my goodness, I am now finding myself extremely happy about my life.
not just because of being here and breathing and thankful and my family, but I'm now thankful that I'm here because of, guess what? I actually am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I am awakened in my gift. I am now sharpening my skills. I am now getting into learning how to advance myself, exploding into who I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm supposed to be reaching into my supreme being. If I'm not, then I'm I'm living me in within mediocrity and we don't want to be that. We want to be grand. We want to be supreme. So with that said, I hope you guys got something today. Please remember that anytime you are trying to sharpen your gifts, it is not going to be easy. I'm here to tell you, I do all kinds of stuff. I write, I create videos, I do banners, I do all kinds of stuff. I'm creating beads. I mean, I'm doing stuff all the time. I'm, I'm coaching a lot of stuff, okay? So for that matter, because I do a lot of things, I knew I had to learn, okay, no matter what I'm doing, let me master them. That's my own. That's see, that's my ass assignment for myself. Yes, I have clients that I, per, you know, I actually build them and then I tell them what their self assignments are, their self work, but I have my own self work. I don't just assign. I also give it to myself. As far as I'm concerned, I got to continuously be focused on sharpening me, sharpening what I need to get done. What am I supposed to be doing? What is my purpose? How am I empowering others? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? If I'm not, what kind of coach am I? And see, for me, if I'm not steadily being focused on learning and seeking and still being coached by other spiritual leaders and, 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 and different people pouring into me, then guess what? I'm not really as sharp of a coach as I should be. So for me, I have to always be on top of doing what I need to do to make sure I'm sharpening my gifts. And so with that said, I'm always big about creating. And creations is important for me. I love creating. I love creating a lot. And not only do I love creating, I also love inspiring others to create. Because when I see other people create and get more empowered within themselves, that just makes me, that's my payment. That's where I'm feeling so much joy and excitement because I'm like, yes, that's what I want to see you doing because life is short. You know what I'm saying? I had a spiritual sister just pass on a couple days ago and I did want to dedicate this, this show to her. Um, her name was Vonnie Reynolds. She was a very powerful woman. She passed on. She got her wings already. She's flying high. My thing is end of the day, I didn't know she was going to be gone already. You know, she's a sister with me in ministry. So it was, it's hard to lose her. But at the end of the day, I know, okay, since you took on your wings, sis, I got to keep going. I got to keep, you know what I'm saying? I got to make sure that I'm still, I'm still um, doing what I need to do because, hey, time is of the essence. We got to make sure that while we're here, we're doing what we need to do. I'm not sad because of her not being in her purpose or not fit fulfilling her, her, assignment at all let me tell you she did everything in her power to make sure she was doing what she needed to do but just me just me missing her my own selfish reasons i didn't want her to leave yet you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day i'm proud of her i'm thankful for her, you know and um and so i just wanted to dedicate this this show to her because at the end of the day she was a sister out here doing the same thing i'm doing you know um her style was a little bit different but at the end of the day she was trying to empower people just like me. So I don't take take that lightly. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, we, we lost a good one. So for me, I just wanted to, to definitely dedicate this show to her, Vonnie Reynolds. And, um, and, and just to let y'all know, hey, we lost a, a very good woman that was out here doing her thing. And if you guys don't remember, I posted a video of um, me talking about suicide awareness. And that was her show, her last event on that so again we lost a good one but at the end of the day uh she's still here I, I look at it like she just transcended um and she's just she's just uh, on the other side but she's still here so anyway i want you guys to understand gifts are very important that we sharpen 
Um, as we learn the, the important parts of our gifts, we learn more about ourselves. We do. We learn a lot about who we are on the inside that maybe we would not have known beforehand. See what I'm saying? So you learn about yourself. It's very self-explorative. Um, it's self-empowering. It's self-loving. All of these things is important when you are starting to step into the supreme being of who you are. So always remember, no matter what, focus on what you need to do. Focus on how, how important it is that you empower yourself. Because as you empower yourself, you don't know who else is watching. And matter of fact, who could be watching beside your children is other people that are struggling with finding themselves. So you may be the number one example to them. And then you're like, oh, I didn't even know they were watching me. Yeah, they're watching. Trust me. I have all kinds of people that tell me, oh, I was watching. I was like, oh, I'm glad I'm leading, you know, and I'm not doing some things that I don't want you to watch, you know. <laughs> so everybody make sure to share this video. If you guys are struggling or really need a coach, do not hesitate to inbox me. I am an inbox away. Also, I have um, wisdom coaching services. You can go over to my page, which is Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services. You can also be a part of my group, which is the Live with Carla Nicole group. And on that group, I have already had structured a mentorship program. So that is really an awesome program. I, I know like I've gotten a lot of great relationships from my mentorship program. It allows me to help people that are just really out of balance and they just need to get in balance. So reach out to me, I'm telling you. Um, so if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Also, I have a course called Awakening or called Awaken Your Gifts. And if you are ready to awaken your gifts, I'm going to make sure to post in here the link for you to do that today. There's no reason you can't take it. And I'm telling you what, once you do, you will find yourself going beyond, I mean, limit. There is no limit. Once you figure out how to empower your gifts, how to do what you need to do, you will shoot in the atmosphere beyond you, any, by any means what you thought you were going to do. You're going to go high up quick, trust me. All right, so I am out of here. Also, if you are not yet signed up over at my uh, other page, which is Soloette Beaded Jewelry, you need to get over there because right now I'm going to be um, doing some sales coming up for the holiday. And I know it's getting late seeing how, seeing how it's almost Christmas. But if you need some last minute purchases done, inbox me i can help you with that we got plenty of jewelry plenty of beads plenty of awesome things okay so make sure to show up and do what you need to do for you always remember you're a flame oh one more thing have you signed up for goddess to goddess the goddess to goddess page hashtag that on the facebook search engine and you can find my other page, Goddess to Goddess. It is a powerful page to help inspire women. And gentlemen, you can join too. So you can even plug in and see some of the good things that we women need to hear from you guys. So, hey, I'm all about trying to restore and build the planet. If I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my job. And I'm not paying my rent. I'm out of here, guys. Remember, you are a flame. That's right you. So get lit and stay lit. This is Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day, guys. Bye.